When you put your hand in my jacket, I'm thinking so irrational. You flew me international now. Hi, welcome back to my church. How have you been? How are you? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Today we have a reading vlog where I read a multitude of things. <laughs> Some things were a little bit more risque. Some things were a bit more horror. Some things were cozy and cutesy. Let's talk about them, okay? First of all, what do you think? <laughs> I think it looks super, super cute. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what I read, okay? Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram if you want. And then also, if you want to, you could sign up for my Patreon. It's like a whole lot of fun. We do a bunch of stuff on Patreon. Any hoothle. First of all, I did read Priest by Sierra Simone. This. Tiffany, this is a romance novel about a priest. His name is Tyler, which by the way, any future aspiring current romance writers, please deter yourselves from naming your main characters Tyler. I don't want to speak for the group, but I'm going to speak for the group and say that nobody, nobody wants a main character named Tyler or a love interest named Tyler. Please don't name your characters Tyler. No offense to any Tylers out there, but just like nobody is like getting hot and bothered from a priest named tyler so this is about tyler tyler is like a priest and he's like very happy to be a priest he became a priest a few years ago after his sister like unalived herself after being like assaulted by this priest guy and so he was like i'm gonna become a priest make sure that everyone's like on the up and up or whatever he's you know living laughing loving the habit you know is that just like a nun thing are habits just for nuns anyway one day He's like doing his priestly things or whatever. He's like in confessional. There's this guy named Carl. He's, he's like on the other side. He's talking about his wife or whatever. And then Carl leaves and Tyler is like, thank God, <laughs> the day is over for me. No, it's not Tyler. Instead walks in Poppy. Again, a little, just like a little side, a little side note. Any romance authors, don't name your protagonist Poppy. No. This has nothing to do really with the book. It's just my opinion. Poppy and Tyler are maybe the worst names for the two main leads. Maybe the worst name. Poppy? Falling in love with Tyler? I believe it because it's so unbelievable. Poppy gets into the confessional and she's like, forgive me, father, for I have sinned. Or whatever. And he's like, oh my God, I'm hard. <laughs> if I could just keep it together for like one minute, just like one minute, I think I'd be okay. But like, I don't think I can. Like this book. I'm not gonna say anything, but just basically get closer, get closer, Tiffany. What I'm trying to tell you right now is the fact that Tyler, this godly man, hears this woman in the confessional and she's like, forgive me, whatever. And then he starts like letting his imagination run wild in not very godly ways. In fact, you could say that it's like sinful almost. And that's like the first like four pages of the book. Tyler is immediately like beholden. Is that a word? I don't think it's a word. To Poppy. He doesn't even know her name. He's never even seen her freaking visage. Okay. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Doesn't know what this looks like. And he's like, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So then when he finally does see her visage and her small, big boobs, and her butt and her body and her little buck teeth, man is obsessed. Man is sexualized in that moment and thus begins a whirlwind romance where Tyler, our protagonist, our main character, has to decide between God, you know, a big old daddy or his submissive girlfriend. And that's the book. That's, that's the book. So I read this <laughs> and then also I did read Fantastic Land. This is completely different than that. Like this, these two, shouldn't be in the same space together, much less the same video, but I read them back to back. <laughs> and so this is a horror novel about this dude. He's writing a little novel. He's writing like this big expose thing about what happened at Fantastic Land. Now, in case you don't know, in case you weren't there, Fantastic Land was a theme park. And it was said to be the best place on earth, like uh, besides freaking Disney. It was like the cheaper sister to Disney. Is that what people say? Nobody says that. And then this huge hurricane hits Florida. 
But thankfully, Fantastic Land have staff who have agreed to stay to like sort of look after the park through the hurricane. There's, I think, 300 people who have this job because Fantastic Land is huge. It's like honky dory. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing is fine, Tiffany, because when they come to rescue the people in Fantastic Land, what they show up to is a bloodbath. There's heads on spikes, there's bones in the gift shop, there's viscera and human remains just scattered about like Christmas presents. It's horrifying. And so the dude who's writing this novel is trying to figure out what happened. How did this happen? I started to read, didn't finish. I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I started to read Half a Soul. I had every plan of reading this, but also keep in mind, this was all supposed to be like a 24 hour reading vlog. And the fact that I even read two books was crazy. To be honest with you, Tiffany, it was crazy I even read two. Now, in case you don't know, this is about this girl named Nora. Nora? No, Dora. Her name is Dora. She is cursed. When she was younger, this like elf showed up and he was like, hey, I'm gonna like eat your soul. And she's like, that's not chill, bro. And he's like, yeah, but I'm still gonna do it. So then he starts to like eat her soul. Things are not looking great for Dora. And all of a sudden her cousin stabs the elf and they're able to like get away. And so since then, Dora has half of her soul as the title implies. And her and her cousin seek out the help from this one wizard dude named Elias, who I think is the love interest. I hope you will like this vlog. It was, it was a roller coaster. Jeremy, have you given any extra thought to inviting me to your wedding? What do you think? I know I could listen after the last time and after I got kind of salty with you and I know I do apologize. I do apologize. I know I said, I'm sorry. And I am, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have reacted that way. I should have like respected your decision or whatever. But now that you've had time to think about it after our talk, do you think? So you're not gonna invite me, but you're gonna invite Tiffany? So what you're telling me, Jeremy, right now is that I'm not invited to your wedding, not me, but the, but Tiffany is, Tiffany's invited. You don't even know Tiffany like I know Tiffany, okay? Tiffany and I have literally been ride or die since day one. You're literally just like an afterthought basically. Like people are like somewhat invested or whatever, but like, I know, I know, I know. I literally said yesterday, I know, I literally said last time that I wouldn't get angry I wouldn't talk down to you anymore, but also when you're literally coming for Tiffany, when like we've, like Tiffany, Tiffany and I have gone through so much together, like literally so much, you wouldn't even understand. And you're inviting them, but not, but not me, but not me. Your literal employer, you don't even know Tiffany. Tiffany doesn't even know you. Like, do they get, do they get a plus one or? Okay, you haven't decided yet. Well, what if Tiffany like brought me? Is there plus one? Like, what would you? What would you even do? You know? Okay. Well, whatever. What? What? Whatever, dude. Whatever. Okay. Tiffany isn't even gonna say yes. Tiffany's not even. Gonna, they're not even gonna say yes. They're gonna be like busy because they're just really popular and cool. So, whatever. I'm not pouting. Just roll the clip. No, it's nothing. It's nothing, Jeremy. Just roll the clip. <laughs> what? This is a joke, right? You mean you can't roll the clip? How is it that every single time you do this, you have technical difficulties? That doesn't seem possible, Jeremy. Okay, you figured it out? Jesus, like you think, you think you would just like work
like midnight. I literally just finished a book. I started it at like nine. I figured I should let you know. We're gonna go from tonight until tomorrow for this reading vlog. I finished Priest by Sierra Simone. This book is wild. I don't wanna get demonetized because every time I upload a video, YouTube like demonetizes me like right off the bat. So I don't know how to talk about this without being explicit, but it was crazy. <laughs> We're following this priest named Tyler and he meets this woman through confessional named Poppy. They hit it off immediately. Just by the sound of her voice, he's like enticed sexually. <laughs> While I'm talking to you about this, I'm gonna cut some potatoes because it's midnight, but I'm hungry. I really want to have some, uh, some potatoes. I did annotate this book slightly, literally just put in tabs whenever there was something like crazy. It is about a, a priest having premarital sex. <laughs> but there were parts of the book where I was like, Sierra, Sierra, you're crazy, girl, you're crazy. Before we even get into anything. The reason I wanted to read this and buy this was because I saw a TikTok where this girl was making a joke about like doing dishes and like listening to smut. In that TikTok, there was this quote. Somehow that made everything so much worse because now it was only a thin line of my self-control that kept me from bending her over a pew and spanking that creamy white butt for making me, <laughs> for making me, when I didn't want to be, for making me think of her naughty mouth when I should be thinking about her eternal soul. Sierra, Sierra, <laughs> what are you doing? There are so many moments like that. So I read this literally in one sitting. The parts that I did tab, the parts that I wanted to talk to you about were all the sex scenes because the sex scenes are wild. And like not necessarily like in a good way overall i did enjoy the book overall i think it's fun it's like whatever i personally wasn't like that attracted to either of the characters like poppy or tyler honestly just because like neither of them are like my type but the sex scenes are wild not only that but like tyler's like attraction to poppy is like kind of weird to begin with like in the beginning i mean she's described as having like buck teeth the way that Tyler like mentions it multiple times in the book, like he just, he's like, he's like, oh yeah, her, her boobs and her butt, also those teeth. <laughs> to the boy, like, like the sixth or seventh time, I was like, okay, daddy, chill. I keep bringing up her teeth. Like, this man would be like, I can't do this because of my religion or whatever. I also thought that like priests were allowed to get married. I thought that the whole like not having sex <laughs> Do I seem threatening? <laughs> I thought that like the whole like not having sex thing was just like a guideline. I, di I didn't think it was actually like a real thing that like you had to abide by otherwise you were like kicked out of the church. So if anybody knows, let me know. Cause I was like kind of confused. I was like, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Cause I used to work at this like breakfast restaurant. I had a crush on, this was like years and years ago, years ago. I had a crush on this dude that would come in and he was like a priest or like a pastor or something. Maybe he was just a pastor. Maybe, is there a difference between a pastor and a priest? Anyway, he would come in with his like flock or whatever. I don't know. I had a crush on him. I was not religious. <laughs> He was also a married man. I think I was like 18 or something or 17. And I just thought he was cute. I remember he made this distinction with me once. I don't know why. I don't remember the conversation. I just remember him being like, sometimes priests like, you know, like vow celibacy, but I'm married and I do have sex. Like he made that clear to me. And I've never forgotten that. I've always remembered that like, oh, there was that one guy who was like religious. And then he also tried to like, <laughs> He tried to get me to read this book called um, The Richard Dawkins Delusion, which was like the Christian or Catholic rebuttal to The God Delusion by Richard Daw Daw Dawkins. He lent it to me, just being like, you liked The God Delusion? Here, read this. And so I took it because I had a crush on him because I was like, you're cute and like literally I'll do anything to talk to you, whatever. It's not a good book. I didn't enjoy it. it never worked out between us. <laughs> because <laughs> he was married and also uh heavily believed in god i think i'm also like 10 years younger than him anyway so he has this big thing tyler about like 
oh, I have to be a God-fearing man or whatever. And like, you know, stick to my vows as a priest. And he has all of this guilt about it, by the way. Like the whole book is literally just like him trying to decide between her or God, which is kind of gay. <laughs> like him trying to choose between like this daddy <laughs> or his like young girlfriend. Like it's a hard decision. I get it. Like <laughs> he would also struggle with that decision. He has all this guilt or whatever. But then when it actually comes time for them to like do it, like have the sex, this man does the most nasty, like filthy, <laughs> like disrespectful things. Like he might as well each and every single time just like spit on the crucifix. Like, Puh. like that's literally how it comes off because they're just like, they're just desecrating is that the right word desecrating the church every single time that they do it <laughs> i know that it's for the book it's for you know the girlies to to get all like hot and steamy or whatever but just like every time they would do it and like they would have like the most disrespectful <laughs> intercourse i would just be like you literally like two pages ago was talking about how you wanted to like respect god now you're taking this like a holy oil and using it as lube like <laughs> you're joking the whole book was a it was a lot oh my god oh my god oh my god tiffany there was also this scene where they basically like soaked listen okay and listen i'm not going to explain soaking to you because i feel like that's if, I, if i'm not already demonetized that's what's going to get me demonetized so i'm not explaining it to you if you're interested look it up on your own time you know google is free but they soaked they soaked there was a soaking <laughs> scene as i was reading it i was like there's no way like there's no way that this woman included this like this is crazy they literally soaked and i thought that was just like a mormon thing but apparently it's not according to sierra simone and her seminal classic priest <laughs> i would recommend you read it just for the spicy scenes alone because honestly the plot there's barely a plot what i found enjoying <laughs> was just like the absolute camp and ridiculousness of each and every single time that they would do it the whole book there wasn't a single scene where i was like i believe this story <laughs> as i was finishing the book i was kind of wondering like how do i feel about this i was like this is fun i like it but i'm also like not living laughing loving and i think what it was was that like i never fully was like attracted to or what's the word yeah, I guess, I guess attracted. And for me, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same for anybody else. But for me, when I'm reading like romance, I have to like, I have to be into one of the characters. Otherwise it just like doesn't work. And I wasn't into either Poppy or Tyler, mostly because Poppy was just, if I'm being honest, just kind of like a placeholder. Like she was basically just like a good girl. And like, they kept being like, she's smart and blah, blah, blah. But like, it was just like showing and not telling. You know what I mean? No, showing, yeah, showing, wait telling not showing i don't know they kept saying she was smart but then actually wouldn't show her being that smart the priest has like a degradation kink where he like talks down to her or whatever and he's like you're like a s l u t you're dirty you're a dirty girl <laughs> like he would be hesitant because he'd be like i don't want to disrespect you and she was like disrespect me because i'm independent but the whole book i just kept being like you keep saying that, but like where, <laughs> where? I think overall I'd give this four stars. I really liked it. It wasn't my favorite. I think it was honestly just like funny and campy. Also, I don't know, I keep going back. The amount of times that these people like just do it, like in public places, the anxiety, the anxiety. It'll be in the middle of a church and just going at it. Meanwhile, the doors are open. It's like 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. That's crazy. Again, the way that this man disrespects the church multiple times, he and she both like do sexual things in the confession booth. They do it on like the altar. They do it in the pews. Like it's crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking about it. I could talk about this for hours, but I'm not going to. I would recommend it if you're of age. Also, I wanted to just quickly show you that I ordered the Stray Kids new album and oh my God. I already showed you with like B-roll, but like the way that I am in love. I fully believe that Lino is like a gay man, but it wouldn't be the first time I've been in love with a gay man. Do you know what I mean? Like, bro, bro, this, this, this is my new sexuality. This is my new sexuality. This is who I am now. Oh, this is my first ever K-pop album. And 
like I get it. I get why you girlies are always broke because I'm about to like literally buy all of them. Like they're so fucking pretty. Oh, I love them. Anyway, I don't know what I want to read tomorrow. I'm kind of going between Brain Worms by Alison Brumafet, uh, Fantastic Land, because I've heard so many people say it's really good. And then also uh, Edenville. I think honestly, I might go for Fantastic Land just because there's so much hype around it. How weird though is this combination? <laughs> Like one hand I'm like forgive me father for I have sinned and then also decapitated heads <laughs> this has been almost like 20 minutes of me just talking your ear off I'm gonna go because I have to boil my potatoes um but I will see you tomorrow good night bye the next day um excuse my egg head i'm currently listening to an audiobook and i'm getting ready so i'm gonna put on makeup and talk to you about what i'm reading i did start fantastic land and i am currently 103 pages into it it's wild at first i was like oh this isn't so bad like this is like chill whatever it kind of has me fucked up and i honestly also I uh, almost started crying. The narrators, the voice actors that they found are absolutely so good. One of the characters started crying and the voice actor or the narrator like made it sound like they were crying. And I was like, oh my God, that's, that's so good. I'm about a hundred pages in. There's a lot going on, like a lot going on. So we start off the book with people who know about the situation, who were part of it, but didn't actually spend any time like in the park. And then we get to the people who were there for a long, long, long time. It's also, by the way, set up as if it's like a true crime slash like nonfiction thing. There's like this whole author's note in the beginning where the author is like, oh, this is why I wrote the book, blah, 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 blah. Like, giving context i guess so i thought that was interesting as well it feels as though it's written like like this actually happened maybe it's like delusional but i feel like it could happen <laughs> i guess there was like that that thing 
those boys that like, got in that plane crash and they had to like eat people who died. The characters. I'm invested. So one of the first people that we hear from is this guy named Sam. He's like a manager at the park. I think this is what makes the book so interesting is that like the characterization for these people, for the characters, is done really, really well. The characters feel real. Like you feel like you're really actually listening to slash reading like an interview. I think that's part of why the book is so, is so good, honestly. Anyway, so this guy named Sam, he's a manager and you can tell immediately that he's like just riding his own dick like all the time. Like he's just sucking his own dick. He's very like self-congratulatory and he's just like, yeah, I'm a hero. I saved people and I wanted to keep everyone safe, blah, 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 which we find out later is not the case like at all that he's literally a limp dick bitch. First of all, enemy number one, hate that guy. And then we hear from this girl named Jill. At this point also, nothing is devolved. Like things are a bit hectic and chaotic and you know, people are bored or whatever, but nothing is crazy yet. But we hear from this girl named Jill and this is kind of where things start to go a little bit crazy. Jill and a bunch of other people go to this restaurant in the park. The hurricane for the most part has ended and it's sort of safer to go outside. Basically everything outside of the park is like flooded. So her and a bunch of people go to this restaurant. They're there basically just to like eat. And so they're there, they're snacking, whatever. And then these dudes show up and Jill immediately is like, oh, these guys are like scumbags. These guys are the worst. And she can tell cause like, she's like a woman. <laughs> she like knows that certain look in a man's eye when he has nothing but nefarious intent. Also, they start like making these like really crass comments about like her, about, I was gonna say her titties. <laughs> they start making these crass comments about her boobs. I'm gonna take her order. I would love a side of breast, you know, whatever. But Jill knows like martial arts or something like that. She basically knows how to like defend herself. Cool, calm and collected while these motherfuckers make a fool of themselves. And she's just like waiting for one of them to attack her so that she can like make her move. She says a comment and it makes them mad. And so one of them like lurches forward, tries to grab her and she basically like knocks his head into the counter and like breaks his nose and you know like passes out. And then the other guys like run away. And so then the rest of the people who were in her group, they show up and they're like, what the hell happened? And she explains it and they're like, oh my God, that was, that's crazy. And so they start thinking like, we should protect ourselves. This is this is crazy. Um, we can't trust anyone but ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. And a bunch of other people are also thinking this. Everyone amongst themselves, it's kind of being like, like bring people that you trust and we'll be like a little community and sort of like be your own little group. And this is how like the tribes, I don't know if tribes is the right word or even appropriate to use, but that's how everything so kind of starts. Slight spoilers, slight. Like the first night after, after that happens and like once they decide like, we're not gonna go back, we're just gonna stay here in the restaurant and like make this our little like home base kind of thing. Um, they also decide like we should do shifts of patrolling. I think there's like two or three people that are chosen. They go out and they, and they just do like a little, like a little lap, but all goes horribly wrong. Um, and the group that's called like the pirates, cause they're like in the pirates area of the theme park. And like specifically this one dude who's like the leader of the pirates and he's like a psycho. Also, this is such a trope for like horror fiction. There's always one guy, one guy who's just like constantly, who's just ready. He's just born ready to kill someone. There's always one weirdo who's just like too violent. Like it happened in Law of the Skies. It happened in um, Battle Royale. It's happening here. Like there's always one guy. Oh shit, I'm doing reading sprints right now and my sprint is about to end uh, in about a minute. So I'm gonna let you go soon. But what was I talking about? Oh, basically uh, the pirates and like that psycho dude, I forget his name. One of the people on patrol got their hands cut off by the psycho dude from the pirates. He didn't die. He's got no hands. That was the first part of the book where I was like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so this is a horror novel. <laughs> it's just so visceral. I'm gonna go because my sprint is about to end um, and I will update you when I, uh, when I have more to say. Um, but so far, I'm really, really, really liking it. I would say so far, it's like, it's like a five-star read, honestly, honestly, but we'll see. Okay, bye, see you soon. Hi, 
Hi, it's like 3.30 p.m. right now, and I just finished Fantastic Land. Bro, first of all, first of all, first of all, I look amazing. <laughs> okay, listen, it's very fresh. I just finished it. I have so many thoughts that it's hard to put them all into one place. I liked it. I really liked it. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think, like, did I love it? I think I would give it four stars. That's just, like, right off the bat. I think I'd give it four stars. But I also don't know what I would say. I didn't like about it. The writing, the formatting, the storytelling. It was so intricate. It flowed really, really well. Basically, it's told from first person perspective. People are giving their accounts to this journalist. And so you're hearing from them, the character, their experience. It's all going in chronological order as well, which helps to make things sort of more easy to understand of how things happened. What I think is interesting, and like, I think one of the main like themes of the book is that it's calling, there's a dog barking in the hallway, is that it's calling attention to our need for distraction via social media, via, via this even. Like it's calling attention to the fact that when people are bored, they will do anything and everything. Or when they feel as though they're not being surveillance, they will do anything and everything. It calls into question the commodification of tragedy. It kind of reminded me of like the Squid Game game show that they're making or already made or that Mr. Beast made. It's like an anti-capitalist TV show about the horror that people go through for money. And we're making TV shows and game shows about it? What? Literally, did you watch it? Like, I think what was interesting as well was like, everybody, the whole book is like, the pirates are the worst, the pirates are the worst. Like, yeah, they're the fucking worst. But also like, the other factions are also behaving in similar ways without the, the pirates anywhere near like they are also killing each other with brutality and viciousness and cruelty i also think it's interesting that like a lot of the interviews you can kind of see where people are being unreliable because people from other interviews will like call their bluff or give a different account as to like how they actually behaved which i think also speaks to how people want to present themselves as like a better person and like be seen as like the most good the book was crazy and I now don't know what I want to read. What the fuck is that? I think it's like 3.40 right now. I do need to go to the store because I need to pick up a few things. And I, but I don't, oh my God. Is that a child or a cat? I genuinely don't know. I need to pick up a few things from the store. Maybe when I get back, I'll start something new. I don't know what though, because I do want to finish something else. I just don't know what. Maybe they're talking to a child. Can you hear what they're, can you hear them? I hope you can. I think it's a child. That's a child, right? Does anybody know? <laughs> if you know what children sound like, let me know because I can't tell if it's a child or a cat. I, I think I want to read something maybe short. I just don't know what. I did like very, very briefly start um, a Brianna Morgan book yesterday, very briefly. There's no, there is an audiobook I think for it on Audible. I might, I might use an Audible credit. I don't know, we'll see. This reading vlog is so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> I started off with priest porn, made my way through like a, a theme park bloodbath and now i'm thinking about ending it on manga i don't know we'll see anyway i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go to the store because uh, i, I want to go so <laughs> okay bye <laughs> she's more than perfect she's not the type to go play a part she came and killed my whole life and just like mike tyson now i'm here seeing stars I could take all of my time just trying to describe her I don't know where to start All my life I knew she's my baby I can't hide it making me crazy Sometimes I close my eyes and dream about when we met in high school And I've been trying to tell her this lately She's more father rock in the 80s I think about her when I sleep Like back when we were 17 
Okay, so it's been almost an hour. It's been like 50 minutes. I went to the store, like I said. I was also gonna go to a coffee shop because there's one that opened up close to my apartment. Turns out they're not open on fucking Mondays, which is honestly kind of rude, but like whatever, I guess. I'm gonna go tomorrow, but still film it. So if, if you saw or see B-roll of me going to a little coffee shop, getting a little latte, pretend like it happened today okay because also when i went to the store i was like oh i won't get anything to drink because i'm going to the coffee shop <laughs> it didn't work out tiffany tiffany it didn't work out anyway <laughs> but i did decide what i'm gonna read oh my god was this me <gasps> oh no did i ruin her book my friend lent me her copy of half a soul because she read this and then she also read the second book and she really liked them and I was like I want to read them too so she lent this to me and I read the first like two chapters of this and I really liked it so I think I might honestly just like continue on with this for the rest of the night I think I'm going to end this vlog around 8 p.m because I'm very tired I've had very little sleep I think I'm going to go to bed early tonight if the lord is willing but I think I'm going to read this now and maybe also make some food because I am hungry I just don't know what I want to eat or what I can eat because I don't I'm running low on groceries I need to go grocery shopping like badly. I'm like lazy and poor also. And also groceries are so expensive in Canada. Do you know how expensive they are? You don't wanna know. It's hard. It's hard out here right now. I am excited to read this. I think I accidentally tore it. Do you see that? I have to ask her if that was there before or not. Cause if it wasn't, fuck. I'm excited though, because what I did read of this, it seemed very cute, very like, kitschy very sort of like oh no main protagonist is cursed and then everyone treats her like shit except for that one special friend slash family member or whatever who i'm assuming is probably gonna die maybe i'm thinking and this is crazy hear me out maybe it'll set off the chain of events of like the main novel all i know is that this is like a romance cozy fantasy i look so good this lip this eye also while I was walking, oh, you, do you see that? Oh my God, I didn't even notice that. While I was walking, my eye was watering and so like attractive. By the way, this is also waterproof eyeliner and apparently it, it's not. <laughs> oh my God, I look so emo. What was I talking about? My brain is everywhere today, Tiffany. I don't know what to tell you. It's everywhere. Right, half soul. The first chapter happened and she gets cursed by that elf guy. I've read enough romanticy to know that like elves and shit, big seller. You know what I mean? Like, especially like elves that are like mischievous and dark. I read Akatar. I read the Cruel Prince trilogy. Honestly, I was actually kind of like obsessed with it. That's like a whole lot. Like if you go back, back in my channel, I think at least I really liked the Cruel Prince. I shouldn't have, but I did. I really liked it. So then when like the evil elf showed up, I was like, do I smell romance? But then he like almost tried to kill her. And I was like, this seems too dark. <laughs> I don't know who her love interest is. I honestly have not read the back of it. I only know what I know, which isn't a lot. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start reading this. I don't know if I'll finish it in this vlog. I doubt it. Cause I also kind of want to like go on TikTok and just scroll mindlessly for a second. I've had like a lot of, a lot of reading, you know, the last few days, I guess like yesterday and today. I just want to disassociate just like for a teeny tiny bit, okay? but then I'll start this, okay? I think I'm also gonna make dinner. I just don't know, I just don't know what yet. Okay, bye. <laughs> Guess that's what I get for leaning into the best run. Now I've got one more accent, two lessons here for holding. Ignored all of my reasons for running far from my feelings. Now I'm down on my knees and watching you as
I'm by myself, you're not around I tried to open up, it wasn't good enough Put in my all and got nothing back Now I'm stuck in the rain, dealing with all this pain Why you gotta do me like that? Don't say you love me, then go and leave me You can't get ugly, trust and believe me Say it to myself, looks are deceiving Trying to fight back, just far from easy I see your hands Lost control, looking at this beautiful distraction. Fell in love with a fatal attraction. I really let my guard down, now relaxing. Why did I open up? She taking with too much. Put her my all and got nothing back. I'm feeling so ashamed, I fell into your game. Why you gotta do me like that? Don't say you love me. Oh my god, hello. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> It's been a few days, honestly, and I just came here to give you my final thoughts kind of thing. Like this is basically like the ending of the vlog, but I just wanted to let you know what I thought of everything. First of all, my thoughts on Priest, still pretty much the same. If anything, I feel like I'm more scandalized now than I was like after I finished reading it. Like the more that it's stewed, the more I question a lot of things. And like a lot of things just like keep me up at night, you know? <laughs> I feel like this book could be my Roman Empire. I just think about it sometimes and I'm like, man was like obsessed with her teeth. He used that oil in her orifices. Like, I think I still have the same rating. I might give it 3.5 to four stars, something like that. I did like it. It was okay, it was good. And I think again, it comes down to the fact that like Tyler and Poppy, just not my types, just not my types at all. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, I think I did, but like the fact that I couldn't tell what size her boobs were annoyed me. Like the, throughout the entire book, the entire book, I was just so confused as to like what was going on in this area. Why, why were her boobs so ambiguous? Just tell me what, what size her boobs are. Cause on one, in one scene, I'd be like, oh yeah, her big, her big knockers. And then another scene, it'd be like, oh, she's part of the itty bitty titty committee. Like there was no telling. And honestly, 
that's just like not good writing. <laughs> like when you can't tell what size their boobs are in a book, are you even a writer? At Fantastic Land. This honestly has kind of faded in the back of my mind compared to Priest. I thought about this more than I thought about this. I think I still have the same opinions. I liked the commentary a lot. I liked a lot of what it was saying. The book itself was super, super readable and like very much like binge worthy. I would say that if you want something that's quick and fast and easy and something that's like interesting and is gonna keep you interested, this is a good, good, good book to go to. What I like about this book also is the fact that it's the kind of book where nobody is necessarily likable. Do you know what I mean? Like everybody kind of has their flaws and they're like right out there in the front. Like you can see them straight away. Like they're there, which I think is interesting. I mean, it's a book about a bunch of murderers. <laughs> like they do horrific, horrific things. What did I give it? Did I give it four stars? I think I would stay with four stars. Maybe like 3.5. I really liked it. Also the audiobook, impeccable stunning gorgeous the, everybody who loves the audiobook and talks about the audiobook they have every right to and i think it's only two narrators which is absolutely fucking crazy half a soul listen i read 100 pages that day i haven't picked it up since but i will say i really like this as it very much has like a cozy vibe but then for me i'm interested to see like what they're gonna do to get back the other half of her soul and i'm also interested to see like the romance between Elias and Dora because they're very, very cute. I'm also interested to see if Vanessa ends up with anyone. I don't know. Listen, I could be crazy, but hear me out. I feel as though Vanessa's kind of gay. <laughs> when I first started reading it, I was like, Vanessa and Dora. It's like platonic, but it's kind of giving like platonic lovers kind of. And I know, I know, I know, I know. They're cousins. <laughs> but my like lesbian brain was like, there's something there. I knew that they were cousins. So I was like, nothing can happen, but there's like a certain vibe and I'm not crazy. Maybe I am actually. <laughs> I'm really interested to see how they're gonna get her soul back. I feel as though they're gonna have to like fight off that like original evil elf guy. Cause like, how else are they gonna get it back? Also fucking what's his face? The, um, her, fr the, the Elias's friend, I forget his name, love him. I love him not because I want him to be with anyone, but just because he's just like, he's just a bro. He's just like there and I really like him. <laughs> That's the thing I really like about this book is that the characters are all very likable, all very like easy to sort of spend time with. I wouldn't say that this is bingeable to be honest, mostly because I've, I haven't been binging it, but it's very comforting, it's very nice. Also, when I read it, just like physically, I can hear like a British narrator and I love that. It has like a very British style of prose. Does that make sense? My friends, my family, my familia. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been so much fun. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, talk about creepy shit, Talk about how we need to forgive our fathers for sinning and shit. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in my next one. Bye. See you. Goodbye. Bye. You look amazing. Bye.